Touchworkers. Do you know what time it is? The famed two-part end-of-season retrospective is before us. Oh, wow. You all know by now that Patchwork retrospectives always begin with a nauseating... ...commercial radio introduction, where we review the season that was. Because we want to remind you... ...that niche podcasts are so much more superior... ...than unfunny, generic, ad-filled, mindless commercial radio drivel. 12 o'clock rock. Now on to our season four retrospective. Didn't the Patchwork Boys again open up their fucked up heart and simple minds to listeners around the world? We learnt that Christian serves 12 course decustations to tradies. And that his non nur is a contemporary artist of the possum variety. Let's paint those foreheads, people. Tell the Prime Minister to go and get from Nelligan. And if anything was ever to go wrong in Christian's room, don't worry, he has a collection of 40 pillows and 90 scatter cushions dotted around his bedroom. Hey Josh, what's the time over there? Just kidding, you don't have a working watch, and yet you insist on wearing one. No problem! But surprisingly, we learnt some lovely things about Josh this season, didn't we? Namely, that he's quite the sharer. He loves sharing his roll on deodorant with his mum, and also loves sharing the sugar bowl. That is, if anyone else wants to dip their juicy fruit in there too for extra flavour. <laughs> Magnetic. And what about Dion? Didn't he reveal his fondness for dogs? That's right, watching them shit. Patchworkers, thanks again for all the videos of your dog shitting. Dion really appreciates it. And didn't Dion get lucky with his new hairdresser, Finn? Let's go to the Patchwork Chopper in the Sky for this update. Yes, the, uh, the barber situation was looking good until Dale actually followed Finn to the new barber shop. And now, yep, they, uh, they work together again. And Dion is compelled to ask Finn for a haircut every time instead of Dale. Uh, yes, and I can detect the undertone of awkwardness. Solomar Pioneers. No need to wait for the beat to drop, Patchworkers. The first instalment of the Patchwork Retrospective is right now. So take a urine-soaked seat next to Josh, get ready for your paper placemats to get dirty. It's time for the squeaky mouse to close the squeaky door on Season 4 of Welcome to Patchwork. Thank you all so much for joining us. It is the end of season four, part A of two (laughs) for our season four retrospective. And it has been quite a big season. Thank you, Dion. Thank you, Josh, for joining me again. Uh, I've it's had just, a lot of fun. He's really acting like the host, isn't he? Thank you so much. Now on to the interview. Um, now, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> now, Dion, you, you're still on that FODMAP diet, right? <laughs> um, we've spoken about some pretty uh, interesting stuff this season. We spoke about whether uh, you can take chips from a packet offered to you and how many you can take from that packet. We spoke about the hospitality you need to give to tradies. A lot of the things, Dion, that was mentioned in that little commercial radio intro. But before we get started, Dion... I do have a little bone to pick with you. This is not a bone to pick, surely, this early. (laughs) Well, it's the season four retro. I want to get the ball rolling. Uh, Dion, we decided that we were going to have a little get-together, you, me, and Josh, to celebrate season four, to have a bit of a personal review, milestones that we achieved, and just to enjoy each other's company, because we don't really often get to do that. (laughs) Sorry, enjoy each other's what? (laughs) Company. That's better, yep. (laughs) Continue. Um, So we, we chose a nice brunch place. And you arrived first. Yep. Josh, I was picking you up. Yep. I brought you to the brunch place in a car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as we arrived and walked through the door, we realised that Dion had chosen to sit at a communal table. You don't know that I chose to sit there. You that... told us you chose well... to sit at the communal table. <laughs> yes, I chose to sit at the communal table. <laughs> Yeah, I did because because I oh, sorry, Christian, did you want to continue? No, well, well, there were, it's a two parter, just like this retrospective. <laughs> Part A, you chose to sit at a communal table. Mm. Part B, the communal table had stools. Yep, Dion. When do communal tables? Communal tables always have stools, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually, I walked in. It was very very busy. It was around Christmas time. It was very busy. I walked in and there was a table. It was like ostensibly for three, but it was very small. And I was thinking. This would be a drag. Like if they, uh, if there's a big plate kind of place, yeah. w- we're in a bit of trouble here. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? I'm going to take the communal table. The communal table was huge, but but so that huge is in terms of the distance. I could barely us. hear you, and I was sitting opposite you. Is that something that I should have checked for? Like, is that something I should have taken into consideration? Like with the communal table, because not all communal tables are made equal. I think the distance from one side across to the other side was yep. fundamentally. It was just the biggest drain. Yeah. It was so big that yeah. you 
I think I was leaning over the table for most of the brunch. But yeah. why are communal tables? Why is there that distance? It's not necessary. I think it's based on the size of the tree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably they cut the trees. whole. They cut the whole tree. Yeah, there's no places selling communal tables. Is that what yeah. they're doing when they go into the forest? They're like, they're, how they're picking out the communal tables? Like, I think that, I think that's a communal table <laughs> tree. Surely, they bring a few chairs. They go, okay, <laughs> angle this right. That's a bit too far. Let's move on. I just don't understand because communal table. The point of it is the length, right? Not the width. The width isn't. Mm. That important. The width, the width needs to be, and that's the problem. They haven't got the middle ground. The individual small table, yeah. If you've got three big plates, and if they bring in the coffee on a little saucer, chaos, yeah, yeah, utter chaos. But then the communal table, far too much distance between them. Just yep. a nice middle ground. Enough for your plates, enough for your coffee. So even like a smaller table, you would have preferred me to take that smaller table. Be honest. Uh, with the laptops as well, because yeah. we had laptops, it probably was the better decision yep. to sit on the communal table. So I didn't take a big issue with the width. I mm -hmm. kind of got over that after a while, even though it was very loud. Yeah. Uh, but the biggest issue I took was with the stools. Yeah, How right. you didn't see stools and go, <laughs> no way. What? Stools are the worst seats. Were these stools with a back? No, so stools that didn't have backs that also had the spot for your uh, feet yeah. inside, like underneath, directly underneath the seat. Yeah. You, it, yeah. It's like it's your your weight is, is completely ill-proportioned. Yep. Normally with a back, you lean back mm. and, you, and you can plant your feet on the ground. Here, your center of gravity, it's all over the place. Josh, I really, I don't know why, but I'm just, I'm knacking this at the moment. What, just... Tell us what you think of stools. <laughs> I just feel like you'll have so, Jeff views on stools, Josh. Yeah, so if the, the foot bar, I like an extended foot bar. <laughs> and maybe like the ones you get at the barbers that are angled with the full, like almost like pedals. They're Jesus. phenomenal. Josh yeah, wants right. to put his legs in stirrups while he eats. <laughs> Do you know what my favourite stool is? I, a favourite stool was I sat on in England. It was the Bristol stool. <laughs> Because hopefully you get that uh, one. Anyway, moving on. Okay. Um, I think what you need, ideally on a stool, is some sort of saddle arrangement. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm so glad I asked. You, you want to be strapped in. Imagine if you could like have, um, are they stirrups? Are they what the, yeah, 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 yeah. Have those like proper horse ones. So you just pop your Amazing. Face. It's so great. So you, so you want to throw your leg over <laughs> yeah. the chair as opposed yeah. to sit into it. No, I think ideally... At least you should have the bar that is across matching the two front legs. Yes. Or it should be yeah. a bar. I think extended out a little bit in front of your feet is ideal. But why do people want to sit in the air? It's like a stationary <laughs> SUV. Um, why do people want... Because you've got to get that vision around the cafe. You've oh. got to see what's coming at you. There's a waitress. But it's always the communal table. Look out, poached egg. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing with the cafe chair is it's all aesthetic. There is very little yeah. consideration for a nice ergonomical sit at a cafe. They're all like, what is? what are we going through? Some exposed wood, some exposed brick, mm. just exposure everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christian, would you go to a cafe that had good ergonomics? If that was their play? Yeah. Uh, depends how the eggs are. <laughs> If I've heard the eggs are good, but we're going to all these cafes where you're literally sitting on milk crates yeah, and having true. your breakfast, but it's a great breakfast. Yeah. Just to get back to the communal table for a moment, um, one of the big things with the communal table to me is the proximity of the other people around you. Mm. So mm. at least on your own table, you've got your own table, you've got a, that bit of separation. As soon as you're on the communal table and you've got someone next to you, if it's a group next to you, not so much of a big deal. My big problem comes when there's the individual. And yeah. we had an individual in this case. And yes. if it's a single individual, my concern most of the time is they're just sitting there listening to our conversation. Oh, oh. I thought that the entire yeah, time. I, th I thought that the entire time as well. But that gentleman that we sat next to, he had headphones in. Nah, he didn't have them on. Yeah. <laughs> no way. He was listening to us the whole time. Yeah, it's really interesting. Because because we had an early interaction with him mm. and the waitress, we all kind of got into each other's faces a bit in a yeah. polite way. That's great. Yeah, it was nice. But I think from that moment, he was like, yeah, I'll just buddy up with these guys. You know mm. what we should have done? Because I think he was reading the paper as well. Afterwards, we should have quizzed him about today's news. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's great. So what did you read in the paper today? What's, what's going he on? He didn't turn the page once <laughs> in two hours. Do you know what I found interesting also about that cafe? On an aside, we asked for a... Well, on a side, we asked for a side of mushrooms. Oh, what did you get, Christian? We got a single mushroom on a plate. <laughs> that was bizarre. A single mushroom on a plate. Do we take a photo of that? I'd love to post that if we got a photo We can go it. back because yeah, I'll do it again. Or we can just do it at home and put a mushroom on a plate. <laughs> I go, there you go, $7. <laughs> we double-checked with the, with the menu. Obviously, they've been raised the question before. It yeah. just says mushroom. Yeah. And so if the menu just says mushroom, does that mean singular mushroom? I really don't think it does. 
Oh, uh, is it like a sheep situation or yeah. a fish? No, no, no. Mushrooms is the plural, right? Okay. Wait, I don't know. Maybe it's not. Wait, but if a, if a, a mini- flock of mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking if a mini says lamb, you don't get a whole lamb. <laughs> <laughs> Lambs. And just Lambs. a side of <laughs> just a side of a lamb, please. <laughs> The other classic seating arrangement that I often love and will go for in a, in a cafe, generally a cafe, is the bench seat, mm. as in against the wall, um, because I like the extra oh. width you've got. You're not locked into a single spot. Oh. And also, the other thing that's great is you get to watch the oh, whole restaurant yeah. in front of you. You've left out one core ingredient. It's usually padded so much better oh, yes, than the opposite chair. It's the padding. Oh, the padding's right. amazing. So you both you both love the padded side. Love I love it. I will always go for the wall seat. Again, I think this has been the season for evolution for me because mm. I would have asked me season three retro, I'm always sitting on the padded side. Oh. Now, I'm, I'm s- in a padded cell. <laughs> 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 now I'm going to sit uh, uncomfortable chair side Purely because... <laughs> what the hell could be the reason? Because the padded side is often too low. And I'd much uh, rather be in a uncomfortable seat than too low. Yeah. And, it, and slightly too low. Actually, yeah. that's something they don't often get right. The, the, the chair and the bench oh. should be exactly the same height. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yep. Actually, one thing I've just bought is I've bought a desk at home that's an adjustable desk. Short oh, people can't Jesus. sit at normal desks. But I, if anything, I want the table to be higher up than too low for me. Higher up? Yeah, I want the table to be closer to my chin than closer to my lap. Oh, if I have hang on, choice, hang on, hang on. Closer Josh. to your chin or close to your chin? <laughs> Josh doesn't want to eat with any hands. <laughs> But then if you have such a high table, you're winging out, no, no, aren't you? No, I'm saying, though, as a preference, if I'm going to go one way, obviously there's a perfect table height. And we all know what that is. Yeah, yeah. Because I think in this season we discussed the perfect dressing room as well. So this is Josh's <laughs> perfect table setup. Just, everything's up to your chin. You rest your chin on the no, table. No, it's that if, if, I, if they're going to go one way or the other, I'd rather have it coming up too high because the little bend over is agony. Oh, yeah. Of, and and yeah. you know, because I like to... You, and you know when you, sometimes you're, you're eating something whatever... You lift yeah. the plate up so you don't spill crumbs everywhere. If that's a massive distance yeah. mm. from plate to face, oh. <laughs> hell, stuff's going everywhere. Abs- yeah. and, and then you get lazy. Yeah, you're getting lazy and you'll often go for the massive, the long distance scoop. Yes. Oh, Jesus, yeah. you'll make a big mess. A, sport- a, new, a new Olympic event. <laughs> <laughs> the long distance scoop. <laughs> what a great visual. Jesus, it's up to 1.6 metres. <laughs> <laughs> the Australians haven't had a good long distance scoop <laughs> for years. <laughs> So you might remember in patch 54, um, I talked about uh, a real find or, or find, as I'd, like, <laughs> as I'd like to call it. Um, and that was a new barber that I found. Now, things are going really well um, with Finn and I. Uh, the relationship is developing uh, really nicely. But um, one thing was that uh, my previous barber, Dale, actually um, took up, I think they call it a residency uh, in the barbershop. It took up a residency at the barbershop. we got and Dale cutting hair every Friday night. <laughs> From 11 till 2. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things I'm finding is that Dale is now, uh, he's actually permanent. He's permanently there and he cuts next to Finn. So it's exactly what it was like <laughs> six months ago. And yet I'm having to come in and book an appointment with Finn and not Dale. So there's, I reckon, I'm detecting a little bit of awkwardness. Dale's a pretty cool guy. I don't think he does. But the other day, Josh, you were in need, in dire need of a yes. haircut. In Dale need. In Dale need <laughs> of a haircut. Um, the day had nearly finished. <laughs> um, and we walked in and Dale and Finn were there. And I really wanted Josh to have the Finn experience. Yeah. But previously, Josh had had his haircut with Dale. And so this was a walk-in appointment as well. Can I just say my favorite thing about this? So we, I went there with Dion. I was like, oh, cool. Well, Introduce me to Finn, that kind of thing. Came in. Both were there. Said hi to Finn. I was like, oh, this is Josh. Like, hey, mate, how you going? And that cool guys just take a seat. So we're waiting like <laughs> 10 or so minutes. And Dion then had this realization. He was sitting there and he's like, hang on a minute. I've brought someone here to not use Dale. And he just went, I've got to get out of here. <laughs> I just had to leave because the situation was Josh was not waiting for either Finn or Dale to, be, to for the seat to be vacant. And then if it was going to be Dale, 
Josh would have gone, no, 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 I'm waiting for Finn. And yeah. he just would have fucked up everything. Yeah. Oh, so I just no. I just had to get the hell out yeah, of there. You got out. So anyway, what happened for me was I, 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 I said I was waiting for Finn. But then I was like, I'm not bothered waiting that long. So Dale came up next and I went to Dale. So mm. I didn't get my Finn experience. But Dale gave me a great cut as usual. Yeah. yeah, so good experience with Dale. But then you said, I said to Josh, so you're going to go back to Dale because he's just up the road for you, Josh. And what was your response? I just got a place near work. Hell, why would you do that? Because you have such a good experience with Dale. Yeah, but the other place was fine as well. The nah, fine? Yeah. What does fine because mean? I mean, thing, Finn Josh- means something, but fine means another. <laughs> Josh's threshold for haircuts is fine is enough. If it's fine, it's fine. But isn't it weird to be fine with something but yet appreciate the haircut? Like, he's fi- he's fine with what he gets, but he really appreciated the Dale haircut. But I don't think I've ever had a haircut and gone, whoa, this is just incredible. Have you, Christian? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. I've never had that. Absolutely. There was a, when I was living in London, there was a place that I went, and it was ages away. And I got the wow. cut, and, I, and then just people complimenting you. Like, yeah. hair looks great. Well, I think... The thing- it, and also, especially for someone like me, hair looks really full. Oh. <laughs> that is the compliment oh. you gave me. Oh. <laughs> I will travel hours. I'll fly back to London to get a full haircut. Ah, oh, it's unbelievable. See, they cut hair off, but somehow there's more of it. <laughs> Actually, for those Patreons out there, you might remember that in a bonus patch, um, I talked about going into work and a colleague of mine commenting on my appearance, saying that I look like shit or that I hadn't slept. But one thing I get when I get a haircut, Christian, I'm really envious of you because people say to me, oh, you got a haircut. They don't say anything about that the haircut looks good, but you get people saying, oh, your hair looks really nice. It was only that one place. Yeah, Every other cut, it's just, oh, haircut. I don't know why people feel the need to scream it at you. I tend to, when I walk into a room after a haircut, I, I will not make contact eye contact with anyone. <laughs> that is bizarre. Because I, I don't want someone to go, haircut! <laughs> because that is so frustrating. That sounds like you are on a different fucking planet. <laughs> That's what happens on Mars, you get a haircut. <laughs> haircut! <laughs> Say what you see. Yes, it's say, say what, what you see. see. There it is. And everyone's <laughs> playing it. I'm so surprised, Dion, that you have the opportunity to see Dale again. But what can I do? I really like yeah, Finn. Yeah, you've committed to Finn. I like Finn. Oh. I like Finn. I do- <laughs> I- <laughs> no, I was just thinking, like, I have to work out who's the better hairdresser, right? And I'm not prepared to say it on this podcast. <laughs> Let's just let's just say that they're equally as good yep. and that hopefully they get more business because of this because you have given them glowing reviews yeah. for a while. Electric Brain Barbershop in Brunswick in <laughs> Melbourne. So when I was at the barber, I had this thought as well that I would love, and I don't do it, I would love to just quietly sit there and close my eyes and enjoy the sound and relaxing nature of it. Oh. Of I, the actual cut. Yes, just during the cut. And I'm like, I don't think during a haircut you can close your eyes because it's weird. One thing, the <laughs> place I used to go to when I initially started, when the first time I ever got my hair cut by a professional, <laughs> and, and they did the thing where they wash your hair. Oh. And I feel like that, that was very much encouraged yeah. to like relax, close your eyes. Was it? Yes, like here's a massage That's with the shampoo. Beautiful. You need to go there, Christian. A- You'd love that. But as a kid, I no, I, no adult. <laughs> no, but as a kid, I received that <laughs> treatment, and I thought there was something wrong with me because I'm like, you're really enjoying this, and I my eyes were just naturally closing because of the relaxation, and I would try every haircut. I would try so hard to keep my eyes open <laughs> so they didn't think anything was wrong with me. It's like you're uh, waiting for Santa Claus or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I was sitting there and I was like, I, I would love to close my eyes. I don't think it's acceptable to close your eyes during a haircut. What do you think, Dion? I'm just wondering, did it cross your mind to ask and go, hey, I'm just going to close my eyes. I actually really love this sound and the, and the I, smell oh, of hair. I no, think, well, no. it's not like a taxi ride or an Uber ride where sometimes you go, hey, I'm just really tired or whatever. And you can kind of shut up. I feel like you have to go with the flow of what the haircut is. But why don't you think you can do it? Do you think that the... I, I just reckon the hairdresser, they used to so many different scenarios and so many different people. People who talk, people who talk too much, people who disclose too much. Like, I reckon they're up for anything. I just want to know from a hairdresser, from a barber, are you okay with me closing my eyes and asking you, is it okay if I don't chat this one? Yeah. yeah. Do you close your eyes at any point throughout the haircut? No. Nah. Really? Do you know what when the ha- when the blower comes out, like and they're and they're blowing away all the hair, my like eyes a, are closed instantly. Like I don't, a dog. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't start licking at it and then I shake at the end. I don't want anything. I don't want any hair in my eyes. No hair in my eyes. No hair in my food. Pres- presumably, Christian, you're happy with either. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> no, I always have found myself now, and I need to train myself to not do it, is during the haircut, because I, I don't... I feel awkward looking in the mirror whilst talking uh, to them, making yes. eye contact through the mirror. Yes. So often I'll just turn my head yeah. and start to look at them directly, no. and they're like... Keep your head where it was. Do you know what it feels like? It must feel like when you're, if you're on a TV show and you're in a studio and you're reading off an auto cue on one camera and then you have to turn to the other in perfect timing. <laughs> it's that thing. So yeah, so you're talking about- Yeah, you about- need someone to give you a cue. Yeah, you do. In the background, yeah. And turn. <laughs> I know, I love the chat through the mirror. Oh, it's great. And mirror four. <laughs> The thing, the thing with the chat through the mirror is you've got such a wider view of the room- with your FOV, your field of view, <laughs> oh, you pick up way more stuff. So you you don't have to move your head. You can move your eyes and cover so much more of the room, mm. and it's great. And you just sit your head but there. It look seems forward. quite impersonal, doesn't it, to speak through the mirror? No, no, it's, it's weird. The, the, it only gets weird when they talk to your head and you're talking to them through the mirror. Yeah. As soon as they look up and they go through the mirror and they ask you a question, then it's on. But they have to look at your head, Josh. They're cutting your hair. They can't cut. No, <laughs> no. But when they're talking to you know, if they're cutting your head, cutting your head. <laughs> if they're looking at your head and then talking to you, it's like, no, no, talk to me through the mirror and then do the cut. C- mm. Can I just ask you a question? Um, when the hairdresser gives you a slight head tilt, do you feel like a failure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they go, just that way. And they go, okay. And, you just, and then immediately like, you lock it in really yeah, yeah. hard. Okay, do not move this. <laughs> so tense. Yeah. Great. It's a great light touch though, is it? It just it's, feels so nice. It yeah. is. It's, it's similar. And that's years of experience, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole semester. Yeah. <laughs> Something that we've never talked about. <laughs> Something we haven't talked about before is dentists, have we, fellas? <laughs> and so I wanted to ask, like, when the dentist asks you to open your mouth up a bit wider, oh. you're literally failing at the only thing you're meant to do. No, no. See, I see it as differently because really? a haircut, you know that it's like, oh, they're there. They want, they've already asked me. But with the with the dentist, it just naturally mm. closes. Your brain switches off. Your mouth just starts to close. Yeah, that's true. I do love closing my eyes at the dentist, though. Yeah. I will absolutely close the eyes at the dentist. It's really? great. I, it's, my, it's my mechanism for dealing with pain. Like, close oh. my eyes. I can deal with anything. It's great. I No, I'm very comfortable doing it because I find it very relaxing, the tinkering in the mouth, which I think I've mentioned before. Like, tinkering in it, the mouth? Yeah. Like, that that whole aspect <laughs> of lying in the chair and all that kind of stuff. And the, and, and the tinkering in the mouth absolutely. you find relaxing. Yeah, because I haven't had, like, dramatic... Teeth. Well, I did get hit in the mouth with a golf club when I was like five. But <laughs> sure. other than that, but I, I, I don't. I think the other thing is you've generally got that light shining in your face, so it's almost encouraging you to close your eyes. Do you ever make eye contact with the dentist? You try and avoid that at all costs, don't you? <laughs> nah, no, no, no. There's too many barriers. There's, there's the mask, the glass, the the your sunglasses. <laughs> no one's seeing each other's so eyes. So they need a mirror then. But like, I think the dentist yeah. would need a series of mirrors. So he looks across the top, or he or he or she looks across the top of you, shoots up to the roof, and then down to you. <laughs> That's what you need. A Three-pronged mirror attack. Do you think that hairdressers also need the eyewear on occasion that dentists use? I'm just thinking for split ends, it would be quite <laughs> useful for them to have those magnifying glasses. <laughs> what magnifying what? glasses? You know the ones that dentists wear? Nah. Really? Oh, they flick them in? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what the I've eye doctors that. eye doctors have that. Oh, but I've been to two dentists in my life and both use that. Really? How small are your teeth? What a do- <laughs> <laughs> Why I don't understand why why ha- why you can see a hairdresser do their work, but dentists don't let you don't have a mirror or a camera into your mouth. <laughs> How's that look? Yeah, <laughs> a, little, a little off the bottom. <laughs> they blow dry your mouth at the end. <laughs> but honestly, what if they're spending the whole time just kind of tapping on the front of the teeth? You don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's I- why Josh loves it so much. <laughs> and you walk, go back to like dentist, dentist. <laughs> Words. Words have the ability to change us, to shape us, and to define us. These new words are unlike anything we've ever delivered before. We want to bring you new words to enhance your vocabulary. Now, we want to bring you these new words with the power of patchword of the day. Homo erectus lifted the rock above his head and struck the lion across its right eye. (laughs) His family would be safe for now. As he dragged the lifeless feline body inside his cave, his partner ran to meet him. Hey, you're getting blood all over the... Floorboards. (laughs) 
the patch word of the day is floorboards. <laughs> The boy's father had always dreamt of taking his son to a football match. Their team had not won a final in 60 years, and today was his first ever game. As the boy and his dad approached the stadium, the boy took out his ticket, slid it into the machine, but the ticket machine did not respond. Excuse me, said the attendant. Yes, said the boy. You've dropped your... Lanyard. (laughs) The patchword of the day is... Lanyard. Robert and his brother-in-law Peter were manning the barbecue at the annual Thompson family Christmas lunch. As Robert finished his beer and turned another sausage, he asked his brother-in-law, can you get me another beer from the esky? Peter made his way over to the esky, opened it, inspected, and asked, would you like a Chinese beer or a local brew? Shocked, Robert turned to his brother-in-law and exclaimed, hey mate, no need to get... Political. (laughs) The patchword of the day is political. <laughs> really good. As we've heard a number of times throughout this season, I did go on a trip to Egypt and Jordan. So please step into my Bedouin tent, pour yourself a cup of tea. It's time for some more Middle Eastern musics. Now, one of the uh, things we did on the trip was this great uh, cruise down the Nile, and we had a fantastic, really diverse, interesting group. But they weren't that diverse. They're all quite old. <laughs> but a fascinating group of people, and I really loved all of them in, in very different ways. But my favourite, my favourite, my favourite. They were great. They were How just... did you get there so quickly? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like we've shared five days together, and I was like, oh, these are people I would never have anything to do with in my normal life. There's no reason for me to ever meet these kind of people. Yeah. But they are literally my family. <laughs> <laughs> and I love them. <laughs> So I always I enjoyed the conversations and, and meeting new people who had very different lives to me. Yep. And my favourite was Johnny. Uh, Johnny was from Cardiff mm. and he had just done a lot of interesting... He'd sold like alarm systems to gypsies. <laughs> he, he ran like a recycling plant. So it was him and his partner, Johnny and Joe. And I, <laughs> Johnny was one of those people, really sweet guy and his intentions were always great. And talking to him, I could tell... He's just thinking about this stuff and he, he's a, a well-meaning guy, but the way he goes about and his his lack of consideration, he just asks the questions in a very interesting, oh, wow. dynamic way without thinking about anything else. That's such an interesting concept that someone's really well-meaning, but they ask questions in a way that just rubs off wrong on people. Yeah, it came off so wrong a lot of the time. And I, mm. I couldn't stop laughing at some of it, Gosh. but he was fantastic. So one night at dinner... We were talking and there was a, um, a couple from Texas, from Austin, um, and his name was Arun. I think he, his heritage is Indian or, or something like that. And um, so Johnny was like, oh, and, and what's your name? He's like, he's like, Arun. And he goes, Arun, Arun. I taught a boy called Arun 10th grade maths. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> and then he goes, so where are you from? Austin. Austin. Oh, Austin. A lot of fat people in Austin, are there? <laughs> like the rest of America. What do you think it is? That the diet exercise? Why are you so fat in America? <laughs> like, as a genuine question. Wow. And then I, I was losing it. And my girlfriend is like, stop laughing. And I, because it was kind of like, oh, I was egging him on and loving it. And then so he's talking. And one of the other women, Beth, was from Denver. And she was an a obstetrician and gynecologist. So she delivered a lot of babies. <laughs> so in this same discussion, oh, no. he's going, oh, fat, those fat people how do, how do they give birth those fat people <laughs> what do you do is that more difficult is it and you just you, you, they wouldn't fit on the table would they they have to put them on the floor do you <laughs> like oh unbelievable but like clearly he was in a genuine way like how does that work I don't understand how yeah. that works but, but the issue is that it's the very first thing that pops to his head he goes yeah. Austin fat people better ask about it yeah it's yeah. filterless it's like he's there is zero filter there it sounds like um, one of the other things we did which leads a little bit more the other way a bit too far but um, we went on like a walk to a, a, through a village and through some dunes and that kind of stuff and when he came back some other people were asking him oh Johnny how was how was the walk it's like oh I can't really do the accent, but it was great. It's like, oh, the walk was very ugly. <laughs> we, we walked through a village that was completely devoid of any economic or artistic value. <laughs> and he goes, but there are a lot of people there. What do they all do? <laughs> 
Like genuinely, like that what? is the most scathing critique. Yeah. But, but how good is it to be like? What do they all do? There's all these people <laughs> in this village. There's no shop. Like, what, what was your reaction when he said that? Did you just lose your shit? I was sitting away from that. I ever heard. I loved it. I was like writing down <laughs> notes straight away. Yeah, because I think a lot of people would have like a potentially like a visceral reaction when people say stuff like that. Yeah. But I love the fact that you're just sitting back going, "I'm just going to sit back and enjoy well, this. This is I, great." But what am I going to do? It's like I was like, "This guy is incredible. I've not, I've not met something yeah. like this. I'm really enjoying this because he's saying these great things." And I think. I think the thing that made me feel okay about it was it's just an inquisitive guy asking really direct questions. Obviously, there are some elements of his belief system that are a bit iffy. Just quickly, it goes back to patch 28, which is in season three. I know you picked up <laughs> on it. In season three, where I had that tour guide in Russia who was just... I just sat back and enjoyed yeah. him. He was bizarre. Beyond any excuse to repost that <laughs> clip, <laughs> okay. more than happy to. Will do. And similarly, say with your tour, so we, we got off the boat and did some tours and checked out some hieroglyphs and that kind of thing. One of the things, this is just as an aside, you know how you look at the thing, the guide says the stuff and then you start moving on, right? So as we started moving on, as a quiet aside to, to, the, to the guide, Jody's just asked, what do what they used to do their enemies? It's like the Christians, they like burn them alive. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing, I was just looking at some stuff and, you know, there's a lot of um, naked imagery and there's people and then things. And he, like, I was just looking at something as he passed by, he's like, a couple of knobs down there, are there? <laughs> There you go. That's Say the stuff. what you see. He found another one. But the overriding sense of that whole, that part of the trip was these are people I have no, I would never meet otherwise. Because normally when I'm mm. traveling, I'm staying in hostels and that kind of thing. And you're all sort of similar ilk kind of, that, that kind of people who are, who are traveling like that. Mm. But this is so far out of my purview of my ordinary trip that I'm like, these people are fascinating to me. Without wanting to get into like political discussion, because that's the word that we, I was inspired Political. From. <laughs> Patch of the day. Um, it's a very privileged kind of view of the world. Like he can just go around saying whatever. Johnny from Cardiff can go around saying whatever the hell he wants. No filter necessary. Yeah. No problem. And yeah. e- and everyone lets him do it. Yeah. Everyone that's goes. True. That's all right, Johnny. But the yeah. thing is, like, to call him out on some stuff. Like, he never said the thing that would be like, yeah. "Hey, man, that's disgusting. That's racist. Don't say yeah. that." You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because the- yeah, he wouldn't say fat people are <laughs> disgusting. He was like, "Why are there fat people?" Yeah. So yeah. he was genuinely curious. Yeah. Just lacked tact. Yes. It's just amazing that that thing of like having him. Uh, see you if you were laughing like that you must have been petrified because with this guy on the tour had absolutely no idea what was going on <laughs> I your tour, I, he could have been I could have got him to take the selfies of himself and he wouldn't have known <laughs> he had that little self-awareness I had a similar experience to you Dion in terms of like having people around you when you're traveling who are completely like lacking self-awareness which is what I thought that Johnny was but I remember we, I was sitting around and we I was in Munich and traveling by myself with a large group of people at a hostel. And it was at the time we all went to like a beer beer hall. We're having beers. And one of the guys that was with us, some uh, guy from the United States, just pulled out an acoustic guitar and started <laughs> playing acoustic guitar, but really belting <laughs> classic like pop songs out. And everyone else was looking around and being like, has anyone asked him to do this? <laughs> That's really weird. But he weird. just brought the guitar and started... But also like... Really singing, closing his eyes, yeah. <laughs> vibrato, just everything, belting it out really loud that we couldn't actually speak. Was it his guitar? I think it was the hostel's guitar. Oh, he was loving that. But he was loving. He took the hostel's guitar out of the hostel. Yeah, they shouldn't even be played in the hostel, let alone <laughs> yeah. in other venues. So it was really strange to have him belting it out. But then he'd finish the song and be like, "Everyone happy for me to play Ed Sheeran next?" Okay. No. And people would just keep talking uh. while, he, and, and I was like, "How do you lack?" Not only because I can imagine, hey, I love playing guitar for people. It's what I love doing. But when people start having a conversation and looking away from yeah. you, surely you have to have the awareness to go guitar down. I, feel, really I feel like it's the the round the campfire late. The conversation's dying down a bit. Then maybe, then maybe you get the but guitar. You've got out. to ask permission, right? No one's saying no though. No, if you got oh, asked, yeah. if you're at a thing, yeah. hey, do you mind if I play a tune? No, man, go ahead for sure. Yeah, I wouldn't ask for permission. Oh. Like, they just, guitarists just got to do what they do, right? <laughs> but when can you tell them to put it away? <laughs> Come um, on, mate. Zip it, it up. <laughs> <laughs> Telling people off in public is rough. Like, it's a really rough yeah. thing to do. Like, you, like, it's great. It's the best thing in the world. You get a massive rush from mm. it, but especially guitarist. <laughs> yeah. See, I bet there were a bunch of people, Josh, feeling uncomfortable about yeah. Johnny. Yeah, there but were. But they're not few. saying anything to him because it's just Johnny, right? And then he whipped yeah. out the guitar. <laughs> I'll put that away. <laughs> and we'll never buy my bus. Don't know if it's just me. It's got nothing to do with tea. 
We just want everything for free. So we haven't had a Roibos Challenge in a while. And for those that are new to the podcast, the Roibos Challenge is when we get wronged by a company and we go after them like a cheetah would a, uh, a piece of lamb or a mushroom. <laughs> 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 um, and the latest Roibos Challenge um, comes from Shaylee. She's a beloved um, patron, actually. And um, she wrote to us that uh, she was enjoying these delicious corn thins as a desk snack. And every now and then you get a rather chewy, darker, colour tuft in the corn thin and and she said that she finished uh, one particular tuft that wouldn't <laughs> break down and realised that this was no regular tuft it was a rusted staple disguised oh my god yeah as as a as a nutritious corn thin ingredient disguised yeah dis- <laughs> wearing a mustache <laughs> <laughs> so um Shaylee wrote the company an email. And what I'm going to get you guys to do in true Roibus fashion mm-hmm. is I've got uh, the email chain here. So, Josh, right. I'm going to give you one. Christian, I'm going to give you, you. it as well. Um, and, Josh, you can see there that um, the first email is from Shaylee to the company. Hi. I will follow this up with a phone call. But today I was eating the delicious corn thins I always buy. And usually I have zero complaints. Right. I will continue to buy them as well. I do not believe today's incident is by (laughs) any means a reflection on the usual quality of the purchase. Today, when eating my corn thins, I bit into one which did not crunch easily, and then I strung it out of my teeth and thought it was just one of the dark bits being a bit stringy. But after leaving it on my desk at work, I realised it was rusted metal. It looks the same weight as a staple or something. I'm not really sure what it is, but I'm lucky enough to not have eaten it. If you need a photo of what it is, please ask. Everything is fine. I just really thought you should know and take extra safety measures so that people don't ingest rusted metal in the corn thins. (laughs) (laughs) Otherwise, love your work. And then uh, Shaylee received a reply. Dear Shaylee, thank you for taking the time to advise crisp foods of this very concerning issue. I am very glad to hear you are fine while also being very understanding concerning this quality issue. The Crisp Foods technical manager is not in the office today, but will ring you tomorrow morning concerning this once he is back in the office. As mentioned, this is a great concern, (laughs) as we have many quality measures in place, X-ray machines and metal detectors, (laughs) to ensure that this does not happen. Giant magnets. (laughs) Again, thank you again. For your help with this. <laughs> kind regards, Mel Isa. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Just got your voicemail. I will return your call now, but thought I would enclose a photo of the rusted staple. Regards, Shaylee. Hi, Shaylee. Did I just miss your call? I heard the phone ringing while I was in with my boss. Sorry if I did. <laughs> this image is perfect. <laughs> I will pass this on to our technician along with the metal images. <laughs> Many thanks again. Melissa. So Shaylee actually uh, mentioned to us that one part that wasn't covered from the emails was the phone call with Melissa. She apologized profusely over the phone and also asked for her address. Um, she also asked uh, Shaylee to post the staple, which she did. Oh, wow. Anyway, you're probably wondering what the outcome was. Well, the next Monday morning, Shaylee was sent not one or two packets, but rather a box oh, of 12 geez. soy and linseed corn thins to her home address. And it's actually quite funny because Shaylee said she had no idea what, to, what she wanted to do with the corn thins as this was kind of a random ad hoc purchase. So in her words, she took them to work and with her best Oprah impression said to her colleagues, <laughs> you get corn thins, you get corn thins, you all get corn thins. <laughs> but the bit I really like uh, um, is that is, you know, when obviously I need to give this a rating out of 10, a whole rating out of 10, the bit I really like it is that in the email that Shaylee wrote into Patrick, she said to, she said to us, it's almost like a plead, it may not be a free additional car, but it was a buy one, get 12 free. <laughs> Ignoring the dollar value, 12 additional of the original product is a very strong contender for the yeah, Rovers Challenge. That's true. I don't know, I don't know what it's like about uh, pleading to the judges. I know, it's an interesting thing. We'll see how it goes down. <laughs> Additionally, to my case, she said, I received responses very quickly, a phone call, and received the 12 additional corn thin packets in the mail the Monday morning following my email. That's Jeez. all kinds of communication. That's wow. very responsive. What turnaround. That's- also... Gotta 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 praise corn thins. Yeah, 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 they did really well. And and Melissa as well. It was great. <laughs> 
Um, but look, this is a this is a very interesting one. Now, one thing that I didn't mention was that Shaylee wrote this into us. This is actually something that happened in 2014. <gasps> so, so this is super impressive that she has, uh, I think, used elements of uh, of the Roybus challenge in terms yeah, of wow. um, no hey teams, which is usually what we look out <laughs> for. Mm. But in terms of buttering them up and buttering up presumably the corn thins as well. <laughs> and don't um, forget 2014, not much email happening yeah. back then. <laughs> That's true. Um, so I think Shaylee's done really well there. I think also there's written communication interspersed with phone calls. And I think that's a really good way to to, to sort of elevate your point. Mixed medium. Mixed medium, <laughs> exactly. That's what we're after. I think Shaylee, um, you're a patron. <laughs> Let's be honest. We need all the patrons we can get. <laughs> we're aiming for 100. We're on 90. Um but, uh, Shaylee, I think you've done an excellent job here. Um, the only thing would have been an, uh, an additional car with the, <laughs> with the box. Uh, I'm going to give you nine rooibos leaves Whoa. out of ten. Nine? Massive. Nine. She's a patron, Christian. Oh, <laughs> you're selling out the concept <laughs> of the rooibos challenge. Have you ever given less than a six? She got 12 times the product. That's a fantastic option. Oh. And, hang on, hang on, hang on. And, initially, she did not want Anything from it? Her, her. Oh, she, that's it, a play. It was please. a. It was a. It was a very good play. <laughs> it was a great play. Great play. And she's played you, mate. <laughs> Deserves leaves. Deserves leaves. No, leaves, of- leaves, leaves. <laughs> <laughs> you get some leaves. You get some leaves. <laughs> Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? Really, really good. You know what's really, really good? Every once in a while, we like to mix up really good. And this week, we're doing a beloved uh, favourite, Surreally Good. <laughs> and do you know what's Surreally Good? <laughs> When a piece of leather drops onto a roof of a hospital, creating a perfect three-course meal. <laughs> really good. So really good. Really good. So really, really good. good. You know what's so really good? <laughs> when it's the end of the financial year and we vote on which new letter to add to the alphabet. <laughs> so really good. 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 You know what's so really good? When your dog hand washes your clothes and they come out perfectly ripe. <laughs> Thank you for listening to part one of our season four retrospective. It's been a lot of fun. Part one of B. Part one (laughs) of B. Write that down. Um, If you're wanting to support us, uh, Josh, what can people do? What can they do? You can support us on Patreon. And we had a lot of new Patreon subscribers. So thank you so much um, for as little as the year cost is something like $35. That's for the whole year. Australian. For the whole year of this podcast, it means the world to us. It helps this flourish and helps this grow. If you can't afford Patreon, we get it. That's fine. Share the show with your friends. Let people know about it. Helps us heaps. Yep. Uh, Patreon.com slash Welcome to Patchwork. And thank you to all existing patrons. Yeah, a big thanks to the ones who have just recently signed up to help us with the drive. Because obviously a few of you will be seeing this in our new cameras that we've purchased. Yeah. A big thank you to those patrons. It's helped a great deal. Now, as Christian just said, we're posting a lot of videos. So if you're listening to this podcast, we know when you listen to a podcast, who the hell follows the podcast on social media? No one does, but you should follow us because you get to see us, you get to see videos, you get to see stuff. Anyway, we want to share things with you. So please go and like us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, or Twitter. All three, we'd be more than happy. But yeah, go and, go and like us. We know you don't usually follow people. We get it, all right? We, we don't follow podcasts, all right? You don't do it, but just come and follow us. As we do every week, we sew a new patch into our quilt of friendship. Josh, what patch did you sew in this week? Well, Dion, my patch this week was you walking out of a haircut with a pair of scissors stuck in your hair that wasn't picked up by the x-ray machine. (laughs) (laughs) And Christian, what patch did you sew this week? Thank you, Josh. This week, I sewed into my patch a shady-looking staple wearing a moustache being pulled up by the Cornthins metal detector for carrying a concealed handgun. (laughs) And Dion, what did you sew into your patch this week? My patch this week is me starting my own cafe and furnishing it with wide communal tables, bar stalls at chin height, serving only a bland menu of rusted staples. (laughs) Thank you for listening to Welcome to Patchwork this week. I've been Dion. I've been Josh. And I've been Christian. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Is she a patron? Yeah, she is. And I was wondering if I should mention that as well. I think so. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That is Whoa! That's, that's let's use that. Let's use it for something. 